All right, <clears throat> so now we're going to compare you to a proud IT professional. Um, and let's see who fares better. So a common assumption by a lot of newcomers in IT or like aspiring IT professionals is that the IT professionals do some miraculously awesome thing. I mean, they do things better than you would. That's the assumption. Uh, you might not have that assumption, but then you are smarter than I am. But like I'm talking about the average job. So uh, let's take into consideration this simple uh, picture, which is basically an IT organization that you and I would be working with. Uh, and the things that you would do for maintaining these two households, which you have already done, are basically things a cloud architect, cloud professional is supposed to do in a bigger organization. And they just have more tools available to them and just the scope of things is bigger. And let me explain. So in this, how the, these are basically the main absolute activities that you need to do properly to be a good cloud architect, or a good, good cloud professional. First thing I am. So this is the household. There are three computers in it. Uh, if you were to manage it, would you create separate usernames for each computer or would you use the same exact username for all of the computers? Same username, same password. Uh, the requirement here is that daddy needs to have access to all computers uh, and both girls need to have access to just their computers and the little man does not need to have access to anything. So if your answer is you are creating individual usernames for each computer, you are ahead of a lot of IT professionals because a lot of companies and a lot of people use common usernames for mission critical systems. Absolute bad practice, but it's very common out there. All right, next thing is high availability, like how to keep your systems highly available. Do you have a backup computer? Your answer is yes, then you know how to keep things highly available. Once again, the same concept done at a much larger scale in a company. That's what you would do as a cloud architect. Okay, now instance sizing. Uh, so think about the last time you bought a computer. Um, you're, let's say you're buying it for your grandmother. Grandmother says, all I do is browse some internet uh, and watch some movies. What did you buy for her? Uh, 32 gig RAM, $4,000 MacBook Pro, or did you get a nice and sweet, a year old um, MacBook Air from the Apple store? If you did the MacBook Air, once again, you're one step ahead of a lot of IT professionals because it's basically a practice. People just allocate humongous machines. Uh, well, that's how I was able to cut down the cost by $4 million, not by doing something extravagantly awesome, just using common sense. And backup and disaster recovery. Uh, if you're backing up your pictures on external hard drive, that's basically what you're doing. That's what a S3 bucket is. That's where all your backups go in AWS. But having said that, there are two things, well, two concepts which will be very new to you uh, and it would be virtualization and networking so those two i will cover in a little depth in the next two uh, videos that i'm making so that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next one